Hey everybody, welcome to a lesson on one of my most crucial apps, and it's Tweetbot. But guess what? Tweetbot has just been released on the iPad. Now, it's been available for the iPhone uh, for some time, and it's by far the superior Twitter client because of the flexibility and what it allows you to do. And now that it's on the iPad as well, well, it's gone straight to the uh, the the shelf because it is a fantastic, fantastic Twitter client. And indeed, I'd say vital when it comes to tracking and reviewing and looking at various markets. So I'm not going to go through the whole program today. I want to highlight some settings that I want to make sure you got so that you can get the best out of it. And also, I really want to focus on lists because lists are how you become a market influencer. It's your first step to tracking a market. So let's get started. First thing I want to show you here you see this little, there's a little blue icon. It's, uh, I don't know if I can highlight it. No. Um, it's a little blue icon. It looks like a little bookmark. That's actually a new service called Tweetmark. And for applications that support it, it remembers where you've gotten up to in a particular tweet. And when you go to another app or another device, it'll automatically take you back to where you finished. It is a sensation. And... <laughs> Interestingly, there's a bug in this particular version that I'm using right now, but by the time you most of you watch this, it'll be fixed. Um, but it's brilliant because it means that you can work with your iPhone during the day, and then in the evening when you're having a look at your Twitter stuff, you can use the iPad, and you don't have to go scrolling back through every, all of us, I'm sure, have used that. And so you set that up in the settings. So I'm going to tap in the settings bar down the bottom here, and you can see here we've got uh, sounds. Uh, we've got the various displays, of course, that we can use. We can change fonts and stuff, which are wonderful for people. You can have a look at the, you know, new tweets and all that sort of thing. Just, you know, get those to your own sort of, uh, you know, feel. You can turn on and off things if you don't use them. The mute filters function is really interesting. If I'm tweeting an Arsenal match and you really can't give a fig, you can mute me just for a little while rather than unfollowing me. And you, once I've got the Arsenal game out of my system, uh, you can do that, which is pretty cool. You can also uh, here use the different type of quote format. So retweet with a comment, standard quote or via user, which is all very good. And then there's a triple tap function. Now I use it for retweet, but you can also do it for reply, favorite, translate and view in Favstar. For me, retweeting is fantastic that's what i would do most of so i use a triple tap so i just if i have to uh here we are just go back to settings there and if i wanted to uh triple tap uh ricky here oh, oh luke moulton here with his poor old macbook pro i just do one two three and boom retweet to followers or i can quote treat one part of the stuff that's really cool about this particular app is there are so many like if i slide to the left if it's a part of a conversation, I can see all the conversation pieces. We might see one of those a bit later on. If I slide to the right, I can see people who have replied to Luke there, which is fascinating. All of a sudden, those one-sided conversations all of a sudden make sense using Tweetbot just by sliding to the right, and I tap back to go to Timeline. There's a lot of depth in here, and I'm not going to have a lot of time to go through all of it today, So I will, but let's keep going through uh, the account settings. So you can set up no notifications. Be very wary about that because you can get notifications popping up all the time if you have it set up incorrectly. Uh, but here you've got various options for services. You've got URL shortening. I just use Twitter. Image upload, I use Twitter. Video upload, YFrog. You've got various services there that you can particularly use. Um, now, read later is very important. I obviously use Instapaper because when I don't have the time to, like, for example, look at that job application there that Darren Rouse has put up, new blogger job, camping writer. If I wanted to read those details later, I don't have the time now. I literally hold down my finger on that link. You can't see this on the, uh, uh, sorry, I'll do it now when I've got the thing. And I can literally tap, send to Instapaper, and off it goes. And it allows me work, by the way, in the meantime, so it multitasks that, which is sensational. So that'll be an Instapaper when I'm ready to read it. Now, if I go back to settings, here again, what else have we got? Now, the sync. 
This is a free service. There's nothing to set up. All you have to do is turn it on. Tweet marker both here and on the iPhone version of the app and you'll stay in sync. Like I said, if you're watching this on uh, Valentine's Day, it, the update may not be out yet, but it's going to be available very, very soon. Now, the other thing here is Mobilizer, and I happen to use uh, Readability. You can also use Instapaper, or I haven't tried Instapaper actually, or Google. I like the Readability. They seem to do a really good job. Now, what is that? If I tap on that link, oops, there we are, tap on the link to go to the page, I can see this little, there's a little switch up the top here. Now, see, there's the good old Pro Blogger site with all the stuff. But if I click on Readability and he's got it turned on, and I've just switched it on there, look at that, gets rid of everything and shows me just the content, which is absolutely superb. Great for speed, particularly when you're on your phone and you may not be on a very fast 3G connection. Works really well. And you can flick it back and it'll show the website. You can leave that on permanently, which is a really massive time saver. I usually leave it on on the phone. Some sites don't work with it, and when they don't, it just defaults back. So we can click close. So they're the, the settings that I use for all of these. Um, and you can also play with trends if you like, um, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So there you have it. But the big thing I wanted to show you was lists, list management. So... If I click on lists here, you can see I'm currently, I've got currently two lists that I've got here. I've got the Apple Top 20. I've got the Arsenal Top 20, which I've created market influencer lists. I'm looking for people who are influential in these markets. And of course, with Arsenal, I'm just interested in following what all the players and some of the opinionated supporters have got to say. And these lists are fantastic. You know, if I click on these, you can see who's in my list and I can scroll through and, and have a look at these all of these various people who are uh, influencers. Now, if um, there's somebody there that is, um, you know, I can manage the list memberships. I can have somebody in multiple lists if I wanted to, or I can just tap off and that person is no longer in the list. And this is all updated successfully. And I can go through and have a look. And the great thing about, you know, influencers, of course, is if I tap on Jason Snell's um, particular icon here, I then go into, if you're an influencer and you know somebody's an influencer in the market, a great way to figure out who else you should be following, of course, through a list, is to go in and have a look at who, say, Jason is following. Uh, now, if uh, Kara Swisher there, for example, if I tap on her, check this out. Manage list memberships, how easy is this? And I can add her to my top 20. It's as simple as that. And I could go through and have a look and see if there are other people I should be following. Just scroll through. It is such a good thing. Like this is better than Twitter's site. This is better than any of the online. It's just so fantastic to do it this way. And what's great is you've got a count there of how many followers to following. And that's a really big indicator. If I see a lot of followers and very little following, that means that they're a person who a lot of people are interested in. If you see the follower numbers are big numbers and they're both the same, they just use follow, follow me and robots. I'm not interested. So there you have, you know, all the various, um, you know, things. So I can add those to various lists, which is really, really cool. So I can adjust them as easy as that you know i can go into the arsenal top 20 and for example i can pick uh where's the captain here there we are there we are good old robin van percy tap on his icon see who he's following tap on him because there's a couple of new players that are on twitter and have a look now, this is great. If you just want to practice, you don't have a particular market, why don't you get all the players in your current sports team? Um, actually, fascinating to see who he is following. <laughs> it's a bit of a worry, really. Um, you know, so if we've got Chesney there, for example, fabulous goalkeeper, let's see. He's already in my Arsenal top 20, so that's great. Um, you know, Andre Arshavin, I'm sure I've got... Uh, have we got Andre in here? No, I haven't. What a terrible oversight. And quick save and off we go. Now, what's brilliant, of course, is that allows us then 
Oh, he's dreamy, Robert Perez. What a stud. Um, what this allows then, of course, is in applications like this, we can go to our uh, timeline here and then we can choose other timelines. Like we can go to the Arsenal top 20. Apologies if there's swearing in this. Sometimes there is. Um, and there we have it. So I've got all interesting Arsenal news from people that I follow. Just like, uh, uh, you know, if I was following a person, but it's an amalgam. It's like my own little magazine. But that's not the best bit. Because I, if I go back to my timeline there, I am just going to uh, swish that there and go to one of my other favourite apps, Flipboard. Because Flipboard really works best, I think. Oh, look, there's my new dog. Uh, that's Larry. He doesn't like that big dog. <laughs> Very much doesn't like it. Um, so I can go to my Flipboard, Flip, and you can see, look at this. I've got, I can follow a Twitter list, which is fantastic. And look at this. It makes that Twitter list, which looks a bit weird in some ways, right? I can have it flick through, which is just great. You know, and I can have a look at the Apple Top 20. And it's like I've got my own magazine. And you talk about curation. This is such an awesome way to keep track of markets. Now, get this though. This is really cool. So if I go back to TweetBot, guess what? You can actually start lists inside of Tweetbot, we hit the edit button up the top, we click add, and then I come up with a new list. Um, and I am going to who do I who do I know? Um, I'm going to do a list of ugh, Manchester United players. Oh, this is making me feel dirty. Right now, fortunately, I know very little about uh, Manchester United players. I can actually type in a description. People to avoid. Done. Type a description. I can have it a private list, so it's not public. I don't care if people, you know, I'm doing a public service by letting people know. And so I've created a new list. Bam. Done. Now, of course, there's nobody in it. Some would argue there are no players in Manchester United. But how do I, okay, if I'm looking for somebody, then I need to find people. And I happen to know that Wayne Rooney is both a Nathandral and a player at Manchester United. So I click search. Let's see how many Wayne Rooney's there are. There he is. I'm pretty sure that's the real Wayne Rooney because he's got 3 million followers and he's got a hair transplant. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click Manage List Memberships and I'm going to put him in Manchester United players. Now remember, I know very little about Manchester United in all seriousness, apart from me joking. I really don't know many people. But I notice Wayne here is only following 83 because let's face it, he can't count higher than that. But if I tap on Wayne's face here, if I punch it really hard like that, I will see who he is following. And I'll assume he's following some of his teammates and probably porn stars. <laughs> Interesting, he's following Piers Morgan, which is fascinating. Um, so I'm going to go through here, see Joey Partney's following, Stella McCartney. He's not following many of his teammates. Simon Cowell, you can see where his head is. Tom uh, Cleverly, I think he's probably a Manchester United player. So I'm going to add him. Henry Winter is a reporter, but he's not a person that I want on my thing. Uh, there's Nike. David <laughs> DeGay, the fabulous goalkeeper for uh, Manchester United players. Definitely want to pop him in. Press save. Are you getting the feel here? You, 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 you catching my drift? Um, geez, Tim Cahill's got an interesting Twitter uh, icon. Mike Tyson, you know, this is such a psychological profile here. Uh, Gary Neville, he's an old uh, Manchester United player. He's, uh, here we are, Nanny, I recognise him. So I'm going to put managers. See, I, don't, I truly don't know anything about, but because I'm looking at the follower counts and 
the following, I can get a pretty good idea. And indeed, if I click on uh, Michael Owen here, the perennial bench warmer at Manchester United, I can also have a look at some of his tweets down here so I can see if he's worth following. Um, given that none of them are pretty much coherent, then, you know, well, that's it. But I, I can manage list memberships and put Manchester United. Done. And look at how easily I have created those lists. So I now have a terribly a Manchester United players list. It's only got a few players, but if I go to my timeline, tap the little icon here, tap Manchester United players, and look at that. And I can see all of Wayne Rooney's genius and brilliance all in one spot. Terrifying. Now, just to just to close the loop, if I go to uh, Flipboard here and I tap on the little red tab, oh, this is going to make me feel really dirty. So I there I can have a look at my accounts, I think, here, and I click on Twitter. And there's my various timelines, and then I can go My Lists. It's fetching those items, and look at that, Manchester United players. And then horrifically, in what, what is he doing with that dog? Michael Owen in that dog. That is very rugby league, New South Wales style. You can see all the genius that is Manchester United players right there. Fascinating. So there you have it. A, um, a walkthrough creating lists in Tweetbot. And hopefully, when your eyes stop bleeding from all this Manchester United stuff, you will figure out that you can do exactly the same thing in any market. You know, if I was, you know, in looking for strategic business consulting, well, you know, I know for a fact that Tom Peters right, is a serious mover and shaker in management. And there he is, he, and we can tap on him and see who he is following. And we could do the same thing for business markets, and we could generate a fabulous way of following and working through and figuring out in industry influences. And again, you know, I'm going through here and you can see some people that have got a lot of followers and following. And that's, you know, they're all follow you, follow me stuff. So not particularly influences material. So you can scroll through and, and have a look, see if there's anybody that's worth following and have a look. All right, there you have it. That's how this all works. I'm going to have to throw out this iPad now. It's been contaminated for all time. But... Uh, after that, I'm going to check out my Twitter list, and there you have one incredibly huge tweet bot power move. Sensational, sensational 